welcome to all our viewers in Nigeria and around the world to the new cycle on global television. We're live in the nation's capital of Juda. I am Chidunma Jarasen. Socio-economic rights and accountability project Serap has filed a lawsuit against the Nigerian National Petroleum Company NNPC Limited over the failure to account for and explain the whereabouts of the alleged missing $2.4 billion and 164 billion naira oil revenues. The suit followed an allegation documented in the recently published 2020 Auditor's Report by the Auditor General of the Federation that the NNPC failed to release the money into the Federation's account. Bandits have now raided the Alawa community three days after the military authorities withdrew soldiers in the community and two rural local bandits arrest behind the scenes. One of the residents, Madame Yahuja Alawa, who confirmed the invasion, that bandits entered Alawa and the adjoining communities on Sunday morning and stole their foodstuffs and other valuables, including goats and other domestic animals. She said there has been a huge challenge at Central Primary School Arena where dozens of them stopped refuge, citing hunger and lack of space for play as major issues. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa in Abuja, called on Nigerians, irrespective of tribe or religion, to shame the country's enemies by uniting against banditry, terrorism, and other common enemies. Speaking at the second edition of Unity School's Old Student Association Sports Carnival, Musa called on Nigerians to continue to promote the nation's diversity for national development. President Bola Tinubu has stated during a panel session at the ongoing World Economic Forum in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, which focuses on global collaboration, growth, and energy for development, that his administration's removal of the fuel subsidy was in the best interest of Nigeria, saying it was necessary not to plunge the country into bankruptcy. He added that the country's belief in social economic collaboration and inclusiveness among other nations to drive stability on the global stage. He further added that for Nigeria, we are immensely consistent with belief that economic collaboration and inclusiveness are necessary to engender stability in the rest of the world. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll bring you the rest of the news. Welcome back. The federal government, through the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative, PCNGI, has attracted a $50 million deal for the conversion of commercial vehicles to run on compressed natural gas. The PCNGI program director and chief executive, Mr. Michael Uluwagbeni, stated that the deal, which was a private sector initiative, would enable the construction of CNG conversion workshop infrastructure across the country. CNGI is a component of President Bola Tinubu's administration's palliative directed at providing support to the masses. Following the removal of fuel subsidy to alleviate the burden of rising for prices, the federal government allocated 100 billion naira from the 500 billion naira palliative budget to buy 5,500 CNG vehicles, tricycles, and 100 electric buses and over 20,000 CNG conversion kits. Meanwhile, the federal government has begun the demolition of properties affected by the right-of-way on the lagos Calaba coastal road construction. The special advisor, Mr. Oji Uchena, on media to the Minister of Works, David Omahi, made this known in a statement released on Sunday in Abuja. The project would mark a major milestone in the renewed hope roadmap of President Bola Tinubu towards economic diversification. 
Borneo State Governor Babagana Umaru Zulum has appointed the Senator representing Borneo Central District, Kakashe Ulawan, as the chairman for the 2024 Borneo Heart Steering Committee. Inaugurating the committee at the Council Chamber Government House in Midiguri, Zulum noted that the aim of establishing the committee was to ensure a strong base that would drive an effective exercise of the 2024 Hajj in Mecca. Senator Lawan explained that the job of steering the Hajj committee is multitasking and it will be very easy and successful with the help of the committee members. A special squad of police operatives deployed by the Delta State Commissioner of Police, Olufemi Abani Wanda, to accelerate the fight against crime in the state, has broken into the dens of suspected kidnappers in the Sapleh and Ugeli areas of the state. The police public relations officer for Delta State Command, Bright Adafe, in a signed statement in Worry, said that the special squad led by ASP Julius Robinson arrested six suspected kidnappers. They recovered one pump action gun, three Beretta pistols, one revolver pistol, one locally made cut of size gun, and they have also rescued three kidnapped victims. The PPRO stated that efforts are being intensified to arrest the other fleeing gangster members. In the meantime, the Commissioner of Police, Delta State Command, Abami Wanda Ulufemi, has reiterated that the welfare of those seven and late officers is part of the primary interest of the Inspector General of Police, Ulufemi. Ulufemi stated this while presenting a check of over 47 million naira to the family of deceased police officers in Aksaba, the headquarters of the command. The checks were issued to the next of kin of the deceased officers and a part of the IGP's family welfare scheme, group life assurance and group personal accident insurance claims. You're watching the news cycle coming to you live from Nigeria's capital, Abuja. We're, on, we're live on Star Time Channel 276. Kindly follow us on all social media platforms using at Global TV MD and other handles now shown on the screen. When the news cycle returns, poor, poor power supply, governors hire consultants to break district monopoly. These are other stories coming right after this break. Do stay with us. Joining us, this is Global Television bringing you live broadcast of the new cycle. Thank you for staying with us. And now on the foreign scene, a Russian drone attack heavily damaged a hotel in Ukraine's southern city of Nikolai. The governor of the border of Nikolai region said the hotel housed English speaking mercenaries fighting in Ukraine. Him and Ukraine State Emergency Service said the Russian attack also damaged the windows in a nearby hotel and that the heat generation infrastructure was damaged. And on a rather sad note, the death toll due to floods in Kenya has risen to 76 with 29 people injured and 19 still missing. A government spokesperson said as authorities ordered more evacuations of people from at risk areas due to ongoing heavy rainfall. Earlier, a truck carrying people in Makwani County, southern Kenya, was swept away by raging waters. The president said that he is working with multi-agency teams to provide adequate support to all those in need and to move citizens who are in dangerous areas that may be susceptible to floods away from those areas. The Kenya Meteorological Department issued an advisory explaining that heavy rainfall will continue in several parts of Kenya, including Nairobi, although the intensity is likely to reduce on Sunday. And now on business news, governors of the 36 states of the Federation have agreed to work together to tackle epileptic power supply in the country. As part of measures to achieve this objective, the governors have agreed to take steps to break the monopoly of this group in power distribution across the state. 
The Nigerian Naira has recovered against the U.S. dollar at the parallel market as it appreciated to 1,280 Naira to the dollar. This implied that the Naira appreciated by 120 Naira representing a gain of 8.57% when the local currency had in the midweek lost a third of its value barely two weeks after strengthening to below 1,000 Naira against the dollar compared to the 1,400 Naira to a dollar at which it traded. It later dropped to 1,400 against the dollar at the black market on the report of fresh demand pressure. Currency traders had attributed the, the recent depreciation of the Naira to market forces as supply had been unable to meet up with the demand. And now in sports news, Alexei Wobi has moved ahead of John Michael Obi on the list of highest capped Nigerian players in the Premier League. As the Wobi was in action for 90 minutes in Fulham's 1-1 draw with Crystal Palace at the Kevin Cottage on Saturday, which was his 250th Premier League appearance. The 27-year-old was previously tied on 249 appearances with former Chelsea midfielder. Michael Iwobi will now set his sights on usurping Yakubu Ayebemi in third position. For the second consecutive time in two months, the Super Eagles have seen their squad market value drop in the transfer market. Despite finishing second at the 2023 African Cup of Nations in Ivory Coast in February, the three-time African champions suffered a massive drop of 121 million euros the first time this year. They dropped down two steps and are now ranked the 15th most valuable international team in the world while retaining their position as the most financially valuable team in Africa. And that's it on the news cycle and it came to you live from Nigeria's capital Abuja we are on Star Times Channel 276. Kindly follow us on all social media platforms using a Global TV MP and other handles now shown on your screen. I am Chidema Jarrison, thanking you for watching. I'll see you again.